Good morning, it's Thursday, February 4th, and this is the Wenatchee World's podcast, Slices of Wenatchee. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories and other announcements every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Today, why Badger Mountain's ski area is the best kept secret in North Central Washington. Today's episode is brought to you by Equilus Group Incorporated. Equilus Group Incorporated is a registered investment advisory firm in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Equilus Group Incorporated, building your financial success. Learn more at equilusfinancial.com, member SIPC and FINRA. Now our feature story. Picture a bright, sunny day on the snow-covered Waterville Plateau. The topography is flat as far as the eye can see, but somewhere out there is a ski area. As you meander toward the ski hill following the signs, you find your way to the elevated land just past a couple of barns to the Badger Mountain ski area. Almost. Getting to the ski area requires a 500-yard hike up a hill. There, you'll encounter a couple rope toes and a T-rope carrying skiers and snowboarders. This is the Badger Mountain ski area in all its glory. It's a non-profit affair, run entirely by volunteers. An all-day lift ticket will cost you just $10. Steve Hickman is the man in charge, and he's been on the board of directors since 1998. Hickman's been the vice president for the last 10 years. He says it works fantastic with the volunteers, who are organized by the non-profit group. He told us if you make it fun, the volunteers will come and help out. Hickman said there are about 30 or more volunteers. They rotate so they all have a chance to ski. Jeff Smoke has been volunteering for two years. For him, it's a chance to help out the ski hill and make sure it continues in the community. Smoke says that it's been a part of his family's memories for years and years. He also noted that it's a great spot for kids with some of the best snow around. Dietrich Dahling has been volunteering since he graduated from high school five years ago. Though he would rather be riding, he says that volunteering is not too bad. To Dahling, there would not be much to do in Waterville if there was no ski hill. The final step before you call it a day at Badger Mountain Ski Area, don't forget to get yourself a Lions Club burger. For $7, you get a burger, chips, and a drink. The Wenatchee Community Concert Association Board has voted to cancel its shows that had been originally scheduled through May. Unsurprisingly, the decision is due to ongoing state-mandated COVID-19 restrictions. Board member Richard Bligenstorfer said there are a lot of people missing out this year. This would have been the Concert Association's 84th season, and everyone is disappointed. The Wenatchee High School, which has an auditorium that is used for the shows, will not be opening its doors for a concert until at least the fall. Among the cancelled shows are Hooray for Hollywood, which was originally planned to take place on Valentine's Day, the Everly set, which was planned for March 21st, and Serif Brass, planned for May 10th. Bligenstorfer said other venues were looked at, but none of the alternatives could meet capacity needs. So hopefully this virus gets contained and the school can open its doors again. Now, some local history. Wenatchee Valley History is brought to you by Neighbor, your trusted neighborhood community. Neighbor is a free online forum you can trust to connect with your community, focus on facts, and make a difference. Join the conversation. Visit wenatcheeworld.com slash n-a-b-u-r. On the first weekend of May 1920, the Wenatchee Ladies Musical Club staged the inaugural forerunner of what is now called the Washington State Apple Blossom Festival. It was originally the idea of Susan Evelyn Wagner, who had enjoyed such events in her home country of New Zealand. The Wenatchee Valley Museum hosted an online Conversations with a Curator event, where Casey Kosky discussed the history of the festival. Here's a clip. You can find the full version on the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center YouTube page. In the 1920s, it was said this is the most attractive and beautiful spectacle of the year. The first decade of the Apple Blossom Festival was an exciting time to be alive. The First World War had been over for a couple of years and women were finally given the right to vote. It's a time of prosperity in the Wenatchee Valley and the Valley made many big moves to promote itself with a spring festival. The inaugural festival was put on by the Wenatchee Ladies Musical Club with the help from the Commercial Club. It featured a baseball game, Maypole dances, an evening concert in Memorial Park, and the crowning of the first apple blossom queen, Fern Prowell. The Commercial Club, a predecessor of the Chamber of Commerce, sponsored an automobile tour of orchards in bloom. The tour took visitors out of town, up the Wenatchee Valley, stopping in Kashmir for lunch, and then returning to town for more festivities in Memorial Park that evening. Finally, before we go, we'd like to remember the life of Maxine Love of Wenatchee. 
Maxine was raised in Oroville and graduated from Oroville High School in 1942. Soon after, she married Warren Love. Warren was stationed at the Army Air Corps base in Tucson, Arizona, where the couple made their first home. Maxine later moved to Omak in 1944, where she resided until 2017, when she moved to River West Retirement Community in Wenatchee. Maxine was a wonderful homemaker, enjoying raising her children, making delicious meals, and always having a container of a variety of cookies. She enjoyed many family gatherings, where the food was as plentiful as the laughter. She loved her yard, growing beautiful roses and an amazing vegetable garden. Her husband Warren would remark that Maxine was never idle. In the evenings, the family would watch TV, but Maxine would be busy creating beautiful stuffed animals and dolls for her grandchildren. She hemmed, mended, and even darned socks. She once mentioned that if she would have gone to college, she would have become a clothing designer. After Warren retired, the two of them enjoyed many new hobbies and activities. They started to play golf, and soon they were enjoying many days of golf a week. Dance lessons also started, and they renewed their love of dance. Warren and Maxine spent many years traveling to Arizona for the winter months. They also enjoyed trips to Hawaii with good friends where there was plenty of golfing and dancing. Maxine leaves us with a legacy of love and laughter. She is now reunited with the love of her life, and no doubt is golfing and dancing for eternity. Thanks for listening. We'd also like to thank our sponsor again, Equilus Group Incorporated, a registered investment advisory firm in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. The Wenatchee world has been engaging, informing, and inspiring North Central Washington communities since 1905. We encourage you to subscribe today to keep your heart and mind connected to what matters most in North Central Washington. Thank you for starting your morning with us, and don't forget to tune in again on Saturday.